This video should help you understand the concepts behind something called dimensional analysis or unit analysis. It's a good technique to use in order to figure out the units of various physical quantities based on the units of other physical quantities if you know the relationship between these quantities. So it's very useful, especially when you don't know the units of a particular physical quantity. So we use these relationships and we can figure out what the missing units are. It's also a good tool to make sure that you got the correct units on um, the final answer of any problem that you're doing. If you know that the physical quantity should have units of let's say meters, you can go through dimensional analysis and make sure that your final answer has those correct units. So the steps here in order to perform dimensional analysis the first thing you want to do is algebraically rearrange your equation to solve for the physical quantity you're investigating. Once you've done that, let's say you have that quantity on the left-hand side of your equation and all of the other quantities are now on the right-hand side of the equation, what you'd want to do is plug in the units of all of those known quantities. So you're replacing the symbols of those quantities with their units. You want to replace any what we call derived units with their fundamental units. So there are certain units that are made up of other units and we just give them special names. So like a Newton is a unit of force, but really it's a kilogram times a meter divided by a second squared. And so it's useful. So we don't have to write all that stuff often. We just call it a Newton. But when you're doing dimensional analysis, you need to know what those um, fundamental units are. So replace all derived units with their fundamental components. And then you just simplify as much as you can. Some things might cancel out, stuff will be in the numerator, other stuff will be in the denominator, and you might be able to simplify your expression. Whatever you're left with, that, that will be the units of that unknown physical quantity. So those are your steps. A few things you want to remember, it's just kind of basic rules of math that you may not appreciate yet until you get to a problem. So the first thing I want to remind you of is that when you're dealing with an equation, when you're adding terms within an equation, all of those terms must have the same units. So in this example here, this term right here, delta x, is equal to v times t plus one half a times t squared. Each of those terms has to eventually have the same units. So if I know that the units of delta x are meters, that's telling me that meters is on the left-hand side of this equation, which means that each of the following terms on the right-hand side also has to have units of meters. So the units of v, let's say I'm not sure what those are right now. Well, I know that the units of time are seconds. So whatever the units of v are, they need to cancel out with the units of time there so that I end up with just meters in the end. And so you could probably figure this out that V must have units of meters divided by seconds so that the seconds in that quantity cancels out with the seconds in time and so I'm just left with meters. The same thing with that next term, I have one half A. I'm not sure what the units of that physical quantity are, but again over here I have seconds this time it's squared because it's going to be times squared. So I have seconds squared. So again, I have to eventually get to units of meters. So A must have units of meters over seconds squared. So that, that second squared cancels with that second squared. And all of my terms in this equation have units of meters. It's meters plus meters. That just gives you meters. So everything matches up and my, each of my terms had the same units. Another thing you want to remember, um, a lot of these units have fractions within them, and so sometimes you might see yourself dividing by a fraction, which is just a big no-no. Don't do that. Whenever you feel the urge to divide by a fraction, instead multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. So I have this really ugly expression right here. I have a fraction divided by another fraction. I would never write this. This is just asking to make mistakes. Instead, I would write the first thing in the numerator, the meters squared times seconds divided by newtons. And now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction in the bottom. So, so now I'm going to flip it over. Reciprocal just means to flip that fraction. So this term right here, I'm going to flip it over. 
So I have meters over seconds squared times newtons cubed. And so now you can simplify this. I have meters squared times meters is meters cubed. I have seconds up top. Now I have newtons times newtons cubed. That's newtons to the fourth. Seconds squared. My seconds in the numerator cancels out um, with one of the seconds in the denominator. So now I have that meters cubed over newtons to the fourth times seconds. So always remember that trick as well. All right, let's do one example together, kind of putting all of this stuff together. Let's go through all of those steps. I have an equation here that the symbol rho, it's a Greek letter rho, is equal to F divided by AL cubed. So the first step, solve the, the algebraic expression for the unknown quantity. So that's symbol L. So I have rho is equal to F over A L cubed. I need to solve for L cubed. So I'm going to multiply both sides by L cubed right now. That'll take it out of the denominator and it moves it over to the left-hand side of this equation. Um, so now I have L cubed times rho is equal to F over A. I'm going to divide both sides by rho. And so now I get L cubed is equal to F over A over rho. The last step here is I need to cube root everything to get L all by itself. So L is the cube root of F divided by A divided by rho. So there's my expression. Solving, I solved algebraically for my unknown physical quantity. Now I'm going to plug in the units of all of the other physical quantities that I do know. So the units of L are equal to the cube root of the units of F, which are kilogram times meters divided by seconds squared, divided by the units of A, which are meters per second squared, times the units of rho, which are kilograms divided by meters cubed. All right, that is one ugly expression that I'm going to make a lot nicer by, instead of dividing by those fractions, I'm going to multiply by their reciprocals. So I'm just gonna copy this as still the cube root. I have kilogram meters over seconds squared. Instead of dividing, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm multiplying by seconds squared over meters, and then the other one times meters cubed over kilograms. So I flipped over both of those fractions. I'm multiplying by both of their reciprocals. Now let's start canceling some stuff out. These seconds squared cancels with those seconds squared. These meters cancels with those meters. These kilograms cancels with those kilograms. And in the end, I get the cube root of meters cubed. And that is just a beautiful meter in the end. So the units of L end up being meters. And that is my final answer. All right, so rewatch that video, go back through all of those steps again, make sure that you understand um, the basics of dimensional analysis.